there are a lot of good things happening here, and I'm really grateful for you to you for giving me the the ability to be here to make this big announcement. We are going to I'm going to announce the 2016-17 budget on Tuesday, uh, and I'm going to be uh, announcing uh, that I am trying to get a $200 million increase in basic education funding. And that is assuming that it's on top of the $377 million that was embedded in the compromise budget that we agreed to, still not passed fully, uh, for 2015-16. That would be a historic increase in funding for basic education, uh, and I'm committed to doing that according to the fair funding formula so that we have a, a fair way to, to fund it. Up until the Bipartisan Commission, Pennsylvania was really one of, I think, three states in the United States without a fair funding formula. And as, as unbelievable as that was, that was the way it was. So we now have one. It was actually put into place or, or actually agreed to in a bipartisan fashion. Uh, the commission was chaired by a Republican senator, by a Republican House member, uh, and it would help school districts all across Pennsylvania, but especially places like Reading. So I wanted to make that announcement. There are two other things I want to point out. There is a real serious and good reason why we should support public education, why that kind of increase in basic education should be something that, that is we're not just doing that because we want Pennsylvania to get bragging rights as to, to where we are in educational funding. We absolutely need the state to step forward and make a commitment to public education. I live in York County, but I care deeply about whether the children in Reading School District get a good education, because if they don't, my life is going to be diminished. And same reason if people, if the children in my school district, Northeastern York County, public school district, don't get a good education, the folks in Reading, their lives, your lives, are diminished. This is a shared responsibility. All of us have to work together to make sure that we adequately fund education. I know you can't throw money at any problem, but you can't keep taking resources away from this most important function and hope to get to a good outcome. We need to invest in it. We need to make sure that school districts like Reading, like school districts in rural areas, everybody gets a fair shot so that the teachers, the educators have the resources they need to provide the education we need them to provide. It's, it's just that simple. And the final thing is places like Reading especially really need that fair funding formula. We have to make sure that, I mean, funding in, in uh, education in Pennsylvania, we have too high a reliance on the local property tax. There's a mathematical problem there. We just, they're studying math upstairs. There's a real mathematical problem. If we don't do a good job of funding education at the state level, and we're 45th, I think, in the United States in terms of the percentage of funding that comes from the state. Now, you can say, okay, we want to know what's going on overall funding. Well, no, it's in Pennsylvania because we have 500 school districts and because we have the alternative to a broad-based statewide tax is the local property tax. When we don't adequately fund public education at the state level, we're basically saying, you have to rely on the alternative. And that alternative in everywhere, every place but I think Philadelphia is the property tax. The property tax is a tax that is inherently mathematically unfair. Property tax is based on property values and the poorer the tax base, the higher the tax rate has to be and the less money you actually raise. It's just that simple. So to the extent we in Pennsylvania rely on that local property tax to fund something as essential as public education, we're actually we're scrimping in terms of the educational investment we're making in places like Reading and poor rural areas and suburban areas. We need to make sure that we're doing an adequate job, and that's in part using a fair funding formula, and that's in part making sure that we do an adequate job at the state level. I'm not saying we should be number one in the country in terms of the percentage of funding that comes from the state for education, but we shouldn't be near the bottom. We should not be near the bottom because that actually creates an additional burden on school districts like Reading. So those are the three things I'm proud to announce that I am going to continue my support for investing in public education at the state level. Second, that it's really important for all of us to make sure that in this limited government, private sector system, Government shouldn't do very many things, but what it should do, it should do well, and education is a, a key part of what it should do. So we need to get that 
right? That's something that's in all of our self-interest. That's the second thing. And the third thing is we especially need to make sure we distribute the money we invest wisely and fairly so that school districts like Reading are not forced to rely on the property tax, but they have a backstop of a strong state commitment to public education. So that's, I'm, I'm proud to be here, proud to be a champion of public education, especially proud to make sure that what we raise and invest in Pennsylvania, we do as fairly as we possibly can. So thank you again for having me, Dr. Moon.